Um, well, I play, I'm George Young, I play Dr. Victor Canutz, um, and my role, I mean, what's a challenge is I have to make it as real as possible. This whole show, I mean, I'm sure you've heard from everyone, it, it's all based on science facts, not science fiction. Um, and to get to that point of making it as real as possible, for people to actually feel like this could happen to you, because it can, um, We've had so much research with the CDC, with emergency services in general, within Atlanta and without. And, and that includes my role, that includes my character. I'm researching the virus, my character, within the contained area, trying to find what's ground zero or patient zero, and ultimately trying to find a cure. Yeah, that'd be best case scenario. It would be a short show if I find it too short, but anyway, but, um, but to get to that point, I have to, I, there's, so, there's so much, um, chats with the CDC members and, and getting a sort of like um, epidemic and viral, viral outbreak 101 basically to, to make sure it's authentic, uh, what I'm saying and make sure it's believable. It's a whole lot of medical speak for me. I mean you'll see in the first episode, if you haven't seen it yet, that's kind of where I'm going in the first episode, just telling the audience, kind of giving, pushing that exposition, getting the story across as of what the virus is about and making sure you say, this is something real. I've heard this on something similar on the news uh, before, and now this can happen. Oh yeah, what, can, what would happen if it hits the US uh, to this degree that they cordon off a whole area of Atlanta? You know? It's not a pleasant death at all, and what's scarier is that it's we chatted to, to the CDC and said, is this something that can actually happen? If a virus of this strain can be, you know, if it, if it mutates to this degree, can it affect you in this way? And it can, and this sort of that, and that quickly as well. So my character's faced with a lot of this death head on, or a lot of these symptoms head on. And he's a sort of, he's a younger you know, doctor there, and he, he, or the weight of, the, of, of trying to find the cure, find the source of it, is on his shoulders within the container. I'm the most qualified person within the container area who's going to be able to find the reasoning behind this. And at the same time, he's just pat freaking out inside. But he has to stay pretty calm, and I think it comes across a bit rude or a bit uh, separate, you know, separated from other or distant. But it kind of, I think I, I have to be. My character has to be. Otherwise, he's just going to freak out and, and admit that he's really freaking out, and then loses all sense of uh, you know uh, like control. Um, talk about this all the time between uh, the cast and with Julie and with Chris and Matt and all the showrunners it's you know the Walking Dead etc great shows but but in this with this virus you don't you don't become the Walking Dead you just become dead and that is scary in itself and because it's the most realistic thing that can happen with a virus and and it's just it's it's exciting that we do get to to bring this to an audience to make you sit down and think oh wow I if I was in Atlanta, say as an example, on you know on on Fifth Street, whatever, I'd be in the, within this contained area, and then my neighbours would be outside, and and how would I interact with them anymore? You know, did I like them to begin with or whatever? But but it's like, what would happen then? Looking outside, you're tr stuck with this virus, and you're trying to keep a distance from it, but you're contained as well within this quarantine. You're not allowed out because the government says you can't, and and that's something that can actually happen uh, because there's real measures that people have to take if a virus of this of this quality actually spreads and it's just a question of, of the virus just mutating uh, one random it mutates all the time viruses and, and just one mutation we might be one mutation away from something that but this scale and I, I think it's exciting and also a good thing that we, we pose this to the audience I play Katie Frank. She's an elementary school teacher. She teaches a class of sixth graders. One of those sixth graders being her young son she had as a teenager, so a very young single mom. Um, she's also in a custody battle with the father's parents, so definitely dealing with some drama at home. Um, she comes into the school with the kids and the virus Oh, it starts the outbreak actually starts at that hospital so they end up being quarantined in that hospital so she's got parents on the phone she's got in-laws who are you know a little a little much <laughs> trying to keep the cool to make sure all of the students feel safe so she's uh, she's got a lot of weight but she has to definitely 
be the protector and she becomes kind of an unlikely hero and there may be a beautiful relationship blossom with Jake. We don't know how that's going to go, but there's something there. The one thing I love about Katie is I think if she protected every child in the world, it still wouldn't be enough. She's, you know, been through some abuse in her past relationships. So I think I think she's got a love for kids that's so massive that I think every child is extremely important to her. Of course, there's going to be an instinct as a mother to really protect your child. I don't know how that's going to, you know, go. But what I do love about her is she's just got such a beautiful sense of love and morality that I think every kid is important. You know, I don't think she would put him above. But yes, there would be an instinct there for sure to to look to him first. Because when she finds out um, that we have to go back into the hospital in the pilot, it's in the trailer, there's a moment where she's like, Quentin, you stay with me. So yeah. Such a creative genius. She's just, she just knows how to tell a story and she knows how to develop a character and I love how she writes women. It's so, so refreshing to have women with broken hearts and women who've, who've risen up over, over, you know, the trials and tribulations of life and vulnerable women who are strong. Um, so she's completely hands-on. She sat down with us and talked about our, our potential arc what her background was. Um, she was on set every day, always, you know, her and David having their little corner chats and then coming over to you and giving you notes, which was wonderful. Um, so she's, yeah, completely hands-on and also just such a fun person to be around. So she's like, balances work and, you know, play really well. I think she's fabulous.